first chapter. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scripture. The gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead. <coughs> Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all God's beloved in Rome who are called to be saints, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The Word of God. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Gospel Acclamation is on page 3 in Psalm G.
about a joyful mood and upbeat, or your world has come crashing down. Silent night, holy night. All is calm and all is bright. Round young virgin, mother and child. Holy infant, so tender and mad. Sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. Round young virgin, mother and child. When I think about that and as you guys were singing it, it began to calm me. Because my week was everything but tranquil. I just bought a car, a used car. And if you've ever been to buying a car, whether it be a new car or a used car dealer, it can have you up and down in emotions. It's like, am, I, am I getting the right deal? Are they doing the right thing? Have I made the right selection? It took me two months to go through all the things on the internet about this car and that car and how this car compared to that car and what was the faults of this car versus that car. Went to several lots. Finally figured out I had I got the right car, bought the car after two or three days of having to hassle a little bit with the dealer and things not being signed on time and coming out on time. And so I just knew I'd done my checklist right. But since it took me two months to do it, I had forgot something that was at the top of my list when I first started. And so when I got the car and drove off the lot, it wasn't long before I realized, oh, my first thing that I wanted, I forgot. And wow, I made a mistake. And I was feeling like the big bum loser, the big idiot, the big dope. After having gone through all of that silent night, holy night, all has come, all this. And I was just giving myself the big, you idiot, you dummy. You'll never get it right. You'll never do it right. Now you're stuck with it. How about I couldn't be able to complain? Well, because I didn't sign that two-day pay and pay the $750. And so then I just finally was able to get to sleep and I just thought about it and said, God spoke to me in the midst of my little bit of confusion. Then to leave it to God. Let go and let God. Emmanuel, God is with you. That was an angel speaking. At night. So I got up the next day and oh, I just decided to go by the dealer and just say hi and thank you. And as I'm driving my car, the thing that I was so mad that I had forgot didn't bother me so much. And so as the days were going by, and I'm getting used to it and I'm figuring out by going on the internet and looking at all the blogs, how I might be able to correct that one thing that I wanted to correct in the first place. Silent night, holy night. All is calm and all is Round young virgin, mother and child, holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace. You know, when the, when the angel came to Mary and Joseph there in the midst of Bethlehem, they had had a rough ride to Bethlehem. No end at the room. Can you women who have had gone through childbirth imagine that journey on a donkey? in your ninth month. It was everything but holy and mild as they ended up in the birth came at the end. Oh, when God had finally perfected what he was doing through them. And the angels came to them. And they began to sing. And everything there at the major scene was holy and silent. And everything was right. But they had gone through hell getting through that moment. And this is what the Christmas story is about as we journey through this life. There's going to be ups, there's going to be downs. But if we go through it with God, if we go through it with God, even in those times when it just seems like there is no way out, nothing will ever turn right, okay, our health will never get better, even when it looks like it's at the end, when we give our hand to God, and when we remember that we are not in this alone, but Emmanuel, God is indeed with us. Then God somehow sends the angels, like he sent them in the Mary and Joseph story. He sends them to tell them, peace on earth, goodwill toward men, all is well. Emmanuel, 
God is with you. Somehow in the corner of that little manger, Joseph and Mary were able to hear and to receive. And all those who received the word of the angel were able to know God is with us and all will be well, no matter what they are saying. God comes to us in our loneliest moments. God comes also to the lowly of earth, and he comes to the kings and queens. He comes to everyone. There's no one who God leaves out. And maybe I think one of the comforting pieces of the Christmas story, if we really listen to it and get in it, and this year the focus is on Matthew. Matthew begins with the gene gene genealogy of Jesus, of, of that particular holy family. And if you ever read, and you go back and you look at the Old Testament to see who were some of these people on Jesus' tree, when we get to thinking about we're not worthy, or that we're better than the rest of the world, read the genealogy of Jesus Christ. There were prostitutes on his tree. There were murderers on his tree. There were people who held back with others on his tree. The whole story, the whole story, Ruth, Rahab, Tamar, People other than saintly mothers like Mary, but they were the forerunners of Mary. Jesus says, before you get to thinking too highly of yourself, Linda, in all things and in all ways, remember, God is with us, Emmanuel. God is with us. And every once in a while, we need a little angel from somewhere to come and remind us, especially when we're not feeling worthy. God is with us. Especially when we feel like God may have let us down, deserted us. We need to let an angel to come and say, look up, God is still with you, even in this part of your journey. God is with us. An angel shall come. And an angel gives us the good news in the midst of all of this for you guys to remember always, God is with us. But not only does he send angels to tell us, but he also tries to remind us, guess what? You are my modern day angels. And through you, the world will know that I am. Through you, by the word that you give out, by your living, by your witness, by your actions, and just by sharing, you are the angels that come and say in the midst of somebody's night, be of good cheer, God. Emmanuel. And when they look at you, and they're wondering, is there any good left in the world when they can look at you? And they can see through your actions and your words, you're living out the gospel as you know it, as you have it. They can say, yes, God is real, and there still is an Emmanuel. There still is good amongst the horror and the terribleness of this world. There still can be peace on earth. And it can come through me if it came through them. Emmanuel, your job, my brothers and sisters, angels here today. God's will, God's way, God's word, God's work. Read it, know it, because you are God's presence to this very present day. You are the ones to give the word to all you meet this week. That Emmanuel, God is with us. And because of that, we have, we can, we shall, and we will always be able to have peace on earth and goodwill to all men and women. They